So the title of my speech is going to be Why we want to spend the rest of our lives on Mars. Okay, so I will speak about missions to Mars. And uh, more concretely, I'm going to speak about a project called Mars One. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, uh, there's not a lot of specific terminology. Uh, I will speak about hydroponic plants, okay? And then Martian raw ingredients. So raw ingredients from the planet Mars. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here at this Globish session. Um, we live in a world that is rapidly advancing. Sometimes the technological advances take place so quickly that I am left astound. And sometimes I feel like I'm in a Stanley Kubrick film or a science, science fiction story while I'm just reading the paper. And what seems to be a surrealist situation is indeed reality. Uh, I would like to speak to you today about my impressions on the Mars One project that has been very present in the media over the last few years. Mars One was initially launched in 2012 by Bas Landsdorp, a Dutch entrepreneur. The main objective of this project was to establish a human colony on Mars by 2025. The ultimate aim would be to answer the question, is there, was there, could there ever be life on Mars? In order to do this, the NGO Mars One initiated a selection process that was, and I think still is, open to anyone, any person on Earth. Um, all the candidates that apply to participate in Mars One have to know that uh, one of the conditions in taking part of this mission is that they will never return to planet Earth. Moreover, they are also informed of the fact that this mission will be broadcasted broadcasted as a Big Brother-style reality show. That is to say, the participants would be filmed in their everyday life and activities on the Red Planet. If it does take place, it would be the most expensive reality show the world has seen. According to the articles I've read, this project amounts to four billion pounds. Surprisingly enough, the original producer of the Big Brother show, um, Paul Romer, turns out to be one of the ambassadors for this project. Other ambassadors for this project includes a Nobel Prize in Physics and a series of persons that have worked for the NASA. I found this idea of never being able to return to planet Earth quite surprising and offsetting but apparently about 200,000 candidates, candidates have applied since April last year. Out of these 200,000 candidates, only 1,058 made it to the second part of the selection procedure. From 2015, 2015 onwards, the 40 selected uh, participants will start an eight-year training program where they will learn, among other things, how to deal with long periods of isolation. After that, four participants will be sent every 26 months. The participants will take uh, some basic canned food with them until they actually start growing their own food on uh, planet Mars. In the long term, they will live from hydroponically grown vegetables and insects for protein. They are also meant to build a station there and will have the opportunity to do research based on space exploration. The spaceships will also have equipment to train and do sports and the participants will also have the opportunity of calling home to their families and sending emails to their friends or Skyping. The main uh, ambition of Mars One is breathtaking. 
uh, its goal is to establish a fully fledged colony that will require all sorts of untested technology, uh, including high precision landing systems, environmental controls that will allow uh, plants to grow on the surface of Mars, and uh, technology to refine uh, useful chemicals from martial raw ingredients. I believe that many aspects of this mission are questionable. While the articles explain many interesting projects, I see no concrete data on how to, they plan to deal with many things. I've read plenty of opinion articles that question the project's technical feasibility and also the project's funding model. We have to think of the radiation exposure the astronauts will experience and the fact that the project is raising its costs from television rights and sponsorship deals. Most of the participants expect to create an impact on Earth and contribute to advances in science and technology. They want to make a difference. They want to surpass their limits. Regarding the challenge of living life on Earth, uh, one participant said, and here I quote, the majority of communication with my family is by phone or text anyway, so I'm used to having them at a distance. Another volunteer mentions, and here I quote again, I'd like to find a way to grow some tea on Mars. I think it would be very important for the sanity of all people there. Uh, in conclusion, it is clear that man's curiosity regarding the exploration of Mars is never ending. This uh, Mars One project seems to be quite active in comparison with NASA's ambitions, ambitious missions that hope to launch robotic explorations in Mars in 2016 and 2018, which uh, seem to have been cancelled due to Obama's budget <coughs> requests. I'm really curious as to what will happen 10 years from now, what the developments of this project will be. On the one hand, it could promote great advantage for science, but on the other, I fear its big brother aspects could also, could also show the dark sides of human nature. A lot of things could go wrong. Uh, what will happen if the participants don't get along or if they suddenly want to be put back to Earth and are completely unable to? Even though I'm against this Big Brother type of program, I know I won't be able to uh, keep myself from uh, watching this uh, television broadcast. And uh, I guess most of, you, most of you would also be watching sharing and commenting on the victories or failures of the brave participants. This will all enable Bass Landstore to become richer and richer. The question remains whether or not we will unveil the mysteries of planet Earth with the planet of planet Mars in the process. Thank you.